Okay, so for those of you who have been following this channel for a while now, you probably remember when we started our month-to-month -month or bi-weekly tropical updates and pre-seasonal outlooks back in January, February, March, and so on and so forth. It's a trademark and something we like to do on this channel leading up to a hurricane season since that's where we got our start. If you recall, I mentioned that my gut was pretty much screaming at me during the months of January and February that come spooky season, we'll probably be tracking something that could be very impactful for the United States. And well, based on the trends I've seen since we last met and the preceding days prior to that point, even that live stream we did on Thursday... Let's just say we have our target. Welcome back to the Weather Center, everybody. I know this isn't one of our typical days to shoot. It's Saturday, October 4th, 2025. We're four days deep into spooky season. I hope you're gearing up for Halloween. If you celebrate Halloween, you know, not all of us do, but I hope you're getting ready for the incoming of the true fall weather conditions. They may not, not be hitting Florida yet anytime soon, but I know the rest of the United States, especially the upper and the northeastern United States, will probably probably start to feel some of the cooler, drier autumn weather trying to sneak in over the coming weeks. Our days will undoubtedly get shorter as well, but it does look like down here in central Florida and for much of the southeast, we still have a little bit of tropical shenanigans going on. Nothing crazy, just a huge stream of incoming tropical moisture from the Atlantic and the Caribbean. Today, I really want to focus primarily, I know we have an orange blip out there, I really want to focus on something in the Caribbean, the Bay of Campeche that I'm seeing. So if you are brand new to the channel and want timely, accurate, and reliable tropical weather updates, it would mean the world to the rest of us as a part of the Weather Center community. If you kindly consider hitting that subscribe button, let's give that like button a little nudge. Share this information with folks you believe would benefit from it, and let me know in the comments section down below what your thoughts are on everything that we discussed today, or if you simply want to just say hello. It's always great to hear out from all of you, especially our OGs, from our newest to our OG subscribers. It's always great to strike up conversation with everybody. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Here is National Hurricane Center's homepage, and as I mentioned, we do have a disturbance out there. That's kind of doing its thing. Let me scroll down a little bit so it actually captures the data. There you go. So recent satellite drive wind data indicate that a broad area of low pressure has now become associated with a tropical wave, and we are up to a 10 for 60 split. 10, 60 split formation chance is now beginning to slowly inch up over the next two days and up to a 60% shot over the next seven days. And I think based on our model agreement, we will probably see a code red inside the next 24 hours and we'll slowly but surely continue to see those 48 hour chances going up then national hurricane center i'm not too sure if they're bored or just you know investigating what they can on satellite imagery because there has been a weak area of spin just a little bit of a spin across that frontal band that's hanging out over the central and eastern gulf across central florida and then back through the bahamas where we previously had an area of interest highlighted now we have another yellow x a immediately south of Louisiana with a big old goose egg in terms of formation chances. You know, like I said, I kind of find it a little interesting that they even highlighted that, especially if you're just going to zero it out across the board, maybe make mention of it in a tropical discussion perhaps. But, you know, putting a yellow X there with absolutely zilch shot of developing and then removing the one that models actually have some support for, I don't know. But, you know, I digress. Either way, we have a couple things out there that National Hurricane Center is paying attention to, none of which are of immediate concern. However, we will be watching that tropical wave for potentially a tropical storm entering the Leeward Islands, the U.S.-British Virgin Islands, and potentially Puerto Rico as well before it finds a weakness in our subtropical ridging and does the infamous recurving on up towards Bermuda out into open water, staying away from the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, and, of course, the United States. What's not on this chart that could be coming as we get past this weekend into the mid to latter portions of next week is this area. That's what I really want all of us who are watching today to pay attention to from here on out. Like I said, that gut instinct that I projected way back at the start of the calendar year, I'm not going to lie to you and I'm going to keep shooting straight with you all. You know, based on that preliminary 
prediction, we're slowly but surely seeing things lining up to make it that much more of a reality, and I'll walk you through that. Let's get over to your GOES East full disk satellite shot. You can see that when you shift over to the western side of our Atlantic base, and I'll go ahead and draw a line from about Maine all the way down to the south, once you get towards the mid-Atlantic, the southeast, and then through the Gulf, the Caribbean, and then especially the eastern Pacific where we have multiple systems rocking out there right now, you can really begin to feel the rising motions associated with this first pass of the MJO. As this energy continues to move off towards the east, I think that's what's going to help to get this tropical wave here, which could very well become Invest 95L very soon per the National Hurricane Center. That's what's going to help to project a little bit more of the favorability overhead, and that'll get that thing to spin up and probably become our next named storm, Jerry. From then on in, we have a few other candidates. Notice this buildup of storms and moisture down over the southern Caribbean, south of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, really raining down on Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama, maybe even the upper border of Colombia there. You can see this area of disorganized showers and storms will continue to rotate up towards the north and then back towards the west into the Yucatan and Belize. The GFS, the Canadian model, and even the Euro AI model actually do suggest we may get a very, very brief, almost like a flash spin-up in the Bay of Campeche before this thing moves into the eastern border of Mexico, the coastline of Mexico, and then washes out over the higher terrain features just inland across those beaches there. Then, after that, that pivotal time frame between the 12th and the 17th of October, we're really starting to see our models come into full agreement that the gyre is coming back. The gyre is going to be fairly strong, as a matter of fact, and it's only a matter of time before something gets slingshot out of there, and I'll show you that as well. But first and foremost, I'll show you the latest velocity anomalies. There you go. Very powerful signal of some robust rising motions focused in over the Caribbean and the Gulf, and I think that's also why the Euro, especially the operational Euro, and its associated ensembles are yelling at us at this point that, hey, there's going to be some broad low pressure, really good rising motions down there, plenty of moisture as you just saw on the satellite imagery, and we've got those hot water temperatures. We've pretty much almost checked every box for the Tropical Cyclogenesis SOP, the standard operating procedure when it comes to trying to find whether or not you have the mechanisms available to produce a named storm. And that, again, as I've mentioned through some of my previous updates, that's a very healthy signal. To see this, especially on the Euro after the hurricane season we've had up to this point, that's a very strong rising motion. Now, that does come with some caveats. If we do have very powerful and fast motions rising through the vertical of the atmosphere, sometimes that actually reduces our chances of developing an organized system. Today's 12Z Euro actually showed that. We had such a focusing of our rising activity over the Yucatan, Central America, Southeastern Mexico, that throughout the 12Z model run, we never saw it really shrink down and produce a tropical cyclone. That could still very well happen if this thing comes across way too powerful for its own good. We may end up seeing a lot of heavy rainfall, widespread flash flooding across our neighbors down there in Central Central America in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, but we may not see a named storm. However, as we move further through time, if you notice, those rising velocities actually begin to weaken ever so slightly between, been saying it, the 13th to about the 17th, and I think that's when we will probably start to see our ensembles really become fancy with trying to develop our next system down there out of the gyre. You take a look at our weekly anomalies for that same time period. This is between the 13th and the 20th. These are your anomalies, not just the chances. These are your how, could, how far above or below average are the possibilities we see a tropical cyclone, and you can see down in that area, we're actually very high up. We're in the 30, 40, if not starting to squeak into the 40 all the way up to 100% chance we will be above average in terms of seeing development down in that corner of the world. Then we move on to our latest Euro. I'm going to show you the mid-level winds so we can really identify the gyre together. I really want to make that delineation for everybody watching. The gyre is very different from a storm. The gyre is simply kind of like a monsoon. You know, monsoon is typically misinterpreted or misunderstood as rains, when really what a monsoon is a seasonal change or a sub-seasonal change in your overall wind flow. And that's what typically introduces a 
a new fetch of moisture or the opposite, it reduces the amount of moisture in a region. And as a result, you either get a lot more rainfall than average or a lot less. Same thing with our Africa monsoon. When the Africa monsoon kicks on, that's what helps to produce the easterly jet, and then we get our tropical waves. Down with the gyre, definitely looking more sub-seasonal. We're not looking at something that's going to hang around for a month or two. More over the span of two to four weeks maximum, depending on what we have as a mechanism to disrupt the flow down there. This is fast-forwarded to just outside of our forecasted time frame that we've been pinpointing together on the Weather Center. As we walk into the 12th, the 12th of October, look at what happens to your winds down there. Watch closely. See that? See how we're starting to see a very broad counterclockwise spin centered over portions of Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, and Belize. And the rest of Central America, I shouldn't even really be naming countries down there. You have it really much right over top of Central America. You go beyond that to the 13th and to the 14th, and you really start to see the wind flow increase with this feature. And then as we progress deeper into the run out to to the 17th, there's your gyre. So it could very well be a very windy day for a lot of us through Florida, across the Gulf Coast, from Mississippi, Alabama, through back to southern Texas, and then for our friends along the Mexico coast, the Yucatan, and then you'll see some of the winds accelerating out of the west for portions of Honduras, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. It's going to be a very interesting setup, but look at how ridiculously strong that gyre builds up. This would be an instance to where if something came out of this, you may just just move the whole gyre altogether, and you end up with a very broad tropical feature. And it does look like, especially at the very tail end of the run, we start to see a focusing of something in the Western Caribbean trying to lift towards the north. So if I had to put any money down, this could definitely be reminiscent of storms of past like Michael, Idalia, Helene. I don't think this is going to be a Bay of Campeche setup. It could. But based on the trends I've seen over the last few days, all of our models seem to be suggesting it'll be the Western Caribbean that gets going in this case. You take a look at the GFS, before about the 12th of October, you start to see that counterclockwise spin beginning across the region, and the GFS gets a little bullish and tries to aggressively pop out a tropical cyclone in rapid fashion, and as a result, you get slop out of it. And it doesn't help that the GFS is also trying to develop another unstable wave, another frontal system, over the mid-Atlantic. Atlantic states. This is more than likely not going to be the outcome that we get for anything because at the same time this is going on, we have a hurricane in the Atlantic that gets completely picked apart very rapidly by what looks to be a winter style front that comes off the eastern United States down through Florida all the way down into the Caribbean. We've seen the GFS do this before. I'm not I'm not on that. I'm not on board with this. I don't think that's going to be our most likely outcome. The Canadian model is showing a very similar setup with the gyre really kicking off. You can see an earlier run or an earlier system that does pop off and move into the eastern Pacific before our gyre rebuilds back again and then tries to pull something out towards Jamaica, eastern Cuba, and then back up into the Bahamas before it tries to wrap back in to our overall gyre flow. So remember, this is the gyre here. The big change in our environmental flow, let me move that out of the way. I have my cup in the way. That's why my arrow got all messed up there. The gyre is your prevailing winds. And it's a result of very fast upward vertical velocities. And when you get little seedlings like tropical waves or embedded pieces of vorticity where you see the darker shades of red and yellows and oranges, that's when you get entangled within the gyre and it helps to boost how fast or how slow they develop. So all of our models are singing in unison that we will probably see the gyre begin to manifest itself between the 12th and the 17th. And as we get closer to the 17th, that's when I really do think our models are going to come together and suggest a tropical system will be developing down there. And I'm very curious to see what Climate Prediction Center has for us this upcoming Tuesday after they already have us plastered for a 40 to 60 percent chance of tropical activity as of their last update. The Euro ensembles are looking very aggressive with that setup. If you notice, you get that earlier system that may try to percolate as we go over the next couple of days, as the Canadian model showed. The Euro and the Euro AI have shown this on and off. Here comes our next tropical wave, which is why I want our friends down there in the Northeast Caribbean to be paying close attention to that. A pretty decent ensemble cluster pushes it right through the islands as a potentially impactful system. So we're going to keep our eyes open for that. But then watch what happens right in 
through here. I want you to not take your eyes off of that as we go forward in time. Notice how quickly inside the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, and then the 16th out to the 17th, we really start to see ensembles coming together for a potential system that generally tracks towards the north and then finds what looks to be a positive Pacific North American oscillation with that big old trough extending down over the eastern United States, very representative of the way the pattern has almost been stuck for the last month now and tries to dip it back towards the northeast. I'm not going to draw any more arrows from there because, you know, I don't want to start insinuating impact or landfall or anything. The GFS, as we get into that same time frame, is also showing a number of members sneaking up and out of the Caribbean, anywhere between the westernmost Bahamas to the state of Florida and then up against the Gulf Coast. You can see a lot of them ricocheting off an incoming trough or a shortwave embedded within our jet stream pattern up over the United States. So, you know, when I show you the Canadian models or the Canadian ensembles showing the exact same thing in the same general area during the same time frame, more or less, you know, the writing's on the wall. We've definitely seen this before. Models are almost conclusive at this point that the gyre is going to show up. We have the mechanisms and the dynamics we need to disturb the flow. The MJO is typically the most responsible for this time of year to disrupt the flow over the southern United States, especially Mexico, and then the southernmost countries of Central America, reverse it and create those rising motions that then turn into that broad low pressure down at the surface and great divergence aloft to develop your rainfall, your storms, your convection, and inevitably tropical systems. So, again, if you haven't been taking notes, I would highly, highly, highly encourage that you do so. Please take notes. Between the 12th and the 17th, we're really going to start to see things come together. And then after we get closer to the 15th, 16th, 17th, I think that's when we may start to see the makings of a yellow blip down there from National Hurricane Center. And then we may be tracking one of our first... Fairly impact, I won't say very, but fairly impactful systems of the hurricane season, especially if it does end up within a landlocked area like the Bay of Campeche or the Western Caribbean, which my bet is on the Western Caribbean right now. And that's where we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. If you notice a little bit of difference in the way the camera looks, I have another Canon camera. It's a new M50 that I bought for other content, not the weather center, but I have it on cinematic mode. And I noticed that it's picking up on my flickering camera content creator lights here so i apologize for that if you see just very subtle strobing but either way just you know toying around with the overall setup we'll see what's what but thank you all so much for tuning in i hope you've had a spectacular start to your weekend you're bobbing and weaving between all the rains that we're seeing here in florida and around the rest of the southeast the gulf coast states we're gonna be watching a couple different things for our friends in the caribbean especially the northeastern portions where the islands are that could be directly impacted by whatever spins up from that tropical wave highlight by National Hurricane Center. Nothing really to come of the yellow X in the Gulf. I'm still going to be watching over the Bahamas for the next couple of days. And then I'm really, really going to start to dial in what the forecast could look like for the Caribbean, the western side of it, the Yucatan, Central America, and the Bay of Campeche once that gyre gets going. But confidence is going up. And my instincts are coming back in terms of when we've seen this before, pre-Milton, pre-Helene, pre-Adalia, you know, we've seen it a couple times now. So my pattern recognition antenna are up like, hey, I, I've seen this and this is usually when we start to see more of, you could say, performance, execution when taking advantage of what conditions we have in play. So... We'll just have to wait and see. Nothing to be concerned or worried about right now. Please don't take anything as I'm saying as, you know, batten down the hatches, hold on to your butts. We've got a long time to spend with this. It's only the 4th, and we're talking about the 12th through the 17th, which is still 7, 10, 12, almost two weeks from now. It's just good that we are already seeing the consistency this far out so we can start to build some lead time and really put together a forecast that will help us determine what it is we'll be looking at once middle October gets here because I can tell you right now, just looking at the date, it's coming fast. So we'll talk to you again very soon. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.